Today we're talking about Stewie's favorite topic, money. Hi everyone, I am Robin, the copy bitch. This is Stewie, the great Stubinsky, also known as Goober and a bunch of other names that we won't go into right now. Today we're going to talk about how to charge for copywriting services. This is a monster topic. We've actually tried recording this video several times over the course of the last couple months and it just always goes off the rail. So we're gonna see if we get through it this time and if you're watching this video, that means that somehow we did. I wanna remind you that with all of my videos, I always include a link in the description to a blog post that goes into the topic in more depth and definitely check it out in terms of this video. It's probably more important with this video than any of the other videos I've done to date because this is such an important topic. There's so much to think about. And the goal of this particular video and what I'm going to talk about today is not so much to like give you like, here's what you should charge for a blog post, but to give you the philosophy behind why you should think about money and what to charge. The biggest mistake I see young writers make and even ones who've been around for a while is they undersell themselves because they're not thinking about the value that they're bringing to the client. So we're going to get into some of the philosophies and the concepts behind this as well as some actual real money numbers. I'm going to share some of my money numbers as they stand right now in 2022 because I feel transparency is important in any industry but especially this one and if that guides you in some way, great. Disclaimer time. Keep in mind that I'm in the U.S. based outside of Boston. So if you're in another part of the country or if you're in another country, your mileage might vary in terms of what you actually charge for each piece of writing you produce. But the concept I'm going to talk about today will apply regardless or they should. OK, so we ready? You got that all down? Okay, getting back into the value discussion, this is the thing that trips up writers the most because you have to remember that you're not just writing a blog post or writing a website page or writing a social media post. You are actually delivering value to the client. And we have to go back to what copywriting is in order to understand what I'm talking about. Copywriting, remember, is any writing that sells a product, a service, or a cause. It's a $400 billion industry and for good reason. We just live in a digital landscape. Everything is written about, whether it's, you know, a website page or, you know, the pay-per-click ad that you see when you Google something. Like, someone has to write that stuff. And the goal of the writing is to attract the right traffic, bring people in, it's usually to a website where people then will hopefully take some sort of action. It might be to subscribe to a newsletter, a blog, or to actually buy something. That's ultimately what you want them to do, or to book an appointment or to request a demo. That bottom of the funnel action is what we want them to take. So the writing you produce has a lot of value and you have to charge accordingly. So let's give an example. Let's say you have a client who is an acupuncturist and they specialize in fertility issues, okay? Let's say that you write a series of really awesome blog posts about fertility and acupuncture. You've done the keyword research, you've talked to the acupuncturist, you've put out these series of blog posts and they're working really well. They're bringing in the traffic. Let's say you wrote four of them, okay? And you wrote four of them over the course of a month and you know, you write well, you write fast. Maybe it took you, let's say two hours on average to write the blog posts. I'm using a low number here, but just bear with me. I just want to use kind of easy math for, for me, for Stewie, for you. So you might be thinking, all right, what should I charge? I, you know, I, it only took me two hours per post and in my old job and my old days, maybe I was making, you know, something basically like, you know, $30 an hour. So I'm going to give myself a raise and let's, let's call it, you know, let's call it $60 an hour. I'm doubling what I was making in my old job. Okay. And I can understand the thinking. I used to think this way and that sounds like really awesome. Like, okay, $60 an hour. It took me a couple hours to do it. Maybe we'll call it three hours per blog post just to kind of give myself a little extra. So 60 times three is what? 180. You think, hmm, maybe I'll round that up to 200 per post. Okay, this is your thinking. Because you wrote four of them, four times 200 is 800, and you're like, that's a nice little payday. 
I'm with you. Like, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear the logic behind it. But here's why I want to poke a hole in that logic. Let's go back to the acupuncturist. All right. She has these awesome blog posts on her blog, on her website, and there's no expiration. They don't have a shelf life. They don't just work once and are taken down once a patient comes through the door. They're operating 24 seven. That's the whole purpose of having a website. It's your 24 seven store place, um, store place, whatever that is. It's your 24 seven workplace. It's your, it operates 24 seven. We just are not talking well today. I think you get what I'm saying. Your website basically is your 24 seven sales force. I guess that's what I'm kind of trying to say. So it's, it's those blog posts are operating all the time, bringing in the traffic, hopefully converting and converting people into actual patients for this acupuncture practice. So let's think about what the acupuncturist might charge. Um, and I'm using some real numbers here. I actually know some acupuncturists and, and what they charge. So for a visit, they charge, let's say $100 for, per visit. And let's say the average life cycle of a fertility patient is 10 visits meaning when they work with someone who's dealing with fertility issues on average it's 10 visits that they you know work with these particular patients and that's important to know and this all go we'll be getting into more of this so that one patient that your blog post actually attracted and brought in that you charge $200 for for the blog post is actually worth $1000 for that acupuncture practice. So now you can start to see a little bit of the disparity. And remember, it's not a one-time thing. Your blog post could be bringing in patients, new patients, every single week, every single month, every single year, year over year. So now you're probably going, uh-huh, I'm starting to see the value that you're delivering to the client. You need to price it accordingly. And the $200 is definitely too low, all right? Again, don't get caught up in the actual numbers I'm using. Just get caught up in the concepts that I'm trying to establish here. You are delivering a very important piece of the puzzle to your clients. So you want to make sure that you just charge accordingly so that it's fair for you. And it will be fair for the client because they're making money off of the awesome work you're doing. Okay? Think about everything that goes into creating the piece of writing. You don't just sit down and write a blog post, for example. You talk to the client. You do keyword phrase research. You probably have to do more research. You do the actual drafting. Then you revise. Then you send it to the client. Then they might have feedback and you revise some more. So there's a lot of steps that go into that piece of content. The other thing you need to think about as a freelancer is you're responsible for everything. So when you worked for a company, if you worked for a company and you were getting a paycheck, the, you know, taxes were being drawn out of your paycheck. Health insurance contributions are being pulled out of your paycheck. Retirement funds, all this sort of stuff might have been coming out of your paycheck. And now this is all up to you. So your fees also have to reflect that, that you're in charge of you know, your office and your health insurance and paying your taxes. So that's why another reason why you'll be charging more. So hourly quotes versus project quotes. This is another thing that hangs up new writers and even writers who've been around. I absolutely recommend that you avoid hourly quotes for a bunch of reasons. So let's get into them. First of all, it, it's <laughs> you shouldn't get penalized for getting faster at your work if you're just starting out maybe it takes you you know two hours to write a series of emails for a client and after you've been doing it for several years maybe it only takes you one but you're still delivering the same great value you just gotten really better at it and faster or maybe you're dealing with a client who you just really get their industry or their business maybe you have some familiarity with it so the writing comes easily should you make less money just because things have gotten a little easier? No, that's why hourly quotes don't make sense. One of the many reasons why they don't make sense. So if you get really fast at your job, at the work that you're doing, and it takes you maybe, you know, two hours to write the blog post instead of four hours per blog post, you shouldn't be making less. You're still delivering the value. So that's one reason why I don't recommend hourly quotes. Another reason why is it's stressful. <laughs> hourly quotes just create stress because 
you, you might work towards the hour, you know, where we're human subconsciously, like that's, you know, you, you're like, okay, I, take, I, I, I quoted four hours for this particular piece of writing. So you might work towards it. You might actually write towards it when you could have gotten it done in half the time. And it's partly guilt that maybe you do that and partly just subconsciously you're like, well, I have four hours, so I'm going to take four hours. It, it just it's, it just can create this like real, you know, mind, you know, problem in your head. I was about to say a naughty word. Um, so you want to actually not do that. The other thing with hourly quotes is it can stress out the client too. They might think, you know, well, how many hours is this going to take you or can it take you a few hours? You don't want to get into nitpicking hours. Like give a project quote, say this website will cost X. And if you get it done in five hours, if you get it done in 50 hours, that's on you. But everyone knows where they stand. The client knows where they stand. You know where they stand. And yeah, internally, you might know how many hours it takes. You, you actually have to know that because that's how you're going to figure out what to create for that particular project quote. But you're never going to share the number of hours with a client. You shouldn't just because that creates a lot of drama. That creates a lot of stress on both you know, cases. And again, you shouldn't get penalized for being faster. As long as you're delivering the value, if something takes you two hours and, you know, something takes you 10 to do something else, you know, whatever, like you should get paid the value because that's what you're delivering. So when you're dealing with clients, you always want to provide a scope of work, meaning you want to outline everything that you're going to be doing, you know, keyword phrase research, first draft, second draft, you know, one round of revisions, all that sort of stuff. You want to make sure so they understand the value. So your, your scope of work that you give to the client, the project quote, should outline all the wonderful things you're going to be doing to produce this awesome content and how it's going to help them. Because then they're going to start to see, okay, you're not just sitting down and writing a blog post. You have to do research. That makes sense. Oh, you have to talk to you know, a subject matter expert at the company. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, you're going to write a draft. You're then going to send it to us. You're going to revise it. Okay you know, and then you have the deadlines and all that. So they start to see all the work that goes into producing this great content. So they start to get an understanding of the value. And then that will justify, hopefully, the quote that you give them. So let's talk about how you should charge and how you should think about it. You do need to know how long it takes you to write something. So even though you're not going to be sharing hourly quotes with your clients, internally as you're thinking about stuff you need to have a sense of how long does it take you to write the average blog post obviously if you're just starting out you're probably you know either going to underestimate overestimate and that's okay as you do projects just make sure you're keeping track of hours that's probably the best advice i can give you when you're starting out keep track of the hours and how long it does take something and then you can adjust your quotes with a new client moving forward so if after six months you're realizing, you know what, it takes me about, you know, four hours on average per blog post. Some take a little longer, some take a little less, but that kind of be, seems to be the sweet spot for the type of clients you're getting. Okay, now you have a sense of that's what it's going to be. And from there, you kind of have to think about what you have to think about the value you're delivering. You don't want to undersell yourself. You have to think about, you know, where you are, what country, what part of the country, all that sort of good stuff, industries maybe what other people are charging and you have to think about what you want to make, you know? So if you are, you know, and again, think about your quotes have to cover everything. It's not just, you know, your pay. It's also the taxes you're paying. It's also health insurance. It's also retirement. It's also, you know, electricity for your office, all that sort of stuff. All the business expenses have to be considered when you're coming up with that quote. So maybe for that blog post that takes you roughly four hours per blog post, maybe you charge $400 per blog. And that might sound, for some people listening to this, that might sound like a lot. For others, it might not. And again, remember where I am outside of Boston. That's roughly what I charge per blog post, you know? Um, I, I might be able to get a blog done in two hours. I might be able to get it done in four, sometimes six. But, you know, that that four that $400 per blog is a good price point for me at the this moment in 2022. That might change in three years. It should change in three years because prices do change and you have to adjust your prices accordingly. But for me, that's a good price. So, you know, for those blogs that only take me four hours to do, 
um, you know, that's a good hourly rate, $100 an hour. For the ones that I can complete in two hours, that's even better. For the ones that, you know, maybe inch up into five or six, you know, it's a little bit less. But for me, that's a good, good rate. And I haven't had any trouble getting clients to agree to it because I'm delivering the value. So that's how you have to think about things. And I know it's complicated. And in the beginning, you're kind of, you know, going to be spitballing. There are sources online to help you actually get into the nitty gritty or to see what the average costs are for, you know, what other people are charging. Just use that as a guide. Don't use that necessarily as like, this is what I need to do. You need to look at those numbers. Maybe be like, huh, that seems a little bit low. Or is that really reflecting the value that I'm delivering to the client. So that's what I charge for blog posts. For websites, I charge a per page rate. And the reason why I do that is because websites can get really out of hand quickly. Um, and, and I find it's just easier for clients and even for me to understand you know, what the project is. Because a lot of times someone will come to the table and they'll be like, well, we just need a five page website. There's, it's never just a five page website. It always ends up being more than that. So. If you if you quote for a five page website and it goes to like ten pages, then you have to like go back to the client or you know, if you have a clause in your your contract that talks about you know scope creep, it, it's just much easier to do a per page rate I find because that way everyone knows where they stand. You know, if at the end of the day you've delivered twenty pages and it costs X per page, there are no surprises. Um, so I mean, I usually when I'm delivering a quote for a website, it's I let people know what the per page rate is. And, you know, I kind of give them a what a sense of what we're talking about based on the conversations we have so far. So if my per page rate right now is anywhere between 150 and 225 per page, roughly. And the reason why I have stuff on the lower end is because some clients, it, it might be a subject I'm really familiar with, or I just get a sense like this is going to go quickly or maybe for some, you know, reason they, they I know their budget is tighter, but I still want to work with them. And that's fair. Um, you know, the 225, even 250 a page, that could be something for a little, that's a little more complex that I know might require more research or more, um, understanding or a learning curve. So let's just go with the, the, the let's call it $200 per, per website page for now, for this example, let's say it's a 10 page site. Well, you know, that's going to be $2,000. And again, you might think, well, that sounds like a lot for the writing because then they have to have like, you know, someone design it and stuff. Again, think about the value. Like this is the storefront. This is what the prospects <laughs> come into and it works 24 seven. So if a company, a small business spends, you know, five to 10 grand on a website between the design and the copy and everything that goes into it, that's, that's not a lot when you think about what that website can do for the business. If it's built right, if it's written compellingly, if it brings in the targeted traffic and that targeted traffic converts into sales. So again, that's how you have to think about it. White papers um, or guides or any of those sort of premium offers that you'll be writing. There are a couple ways you can approach it. Um, a project quote for sure, but you might want to think about, especially for some of the longer things, a, word, a per word count or as you're doing it, you might want to think about it that way. So maybe you write a white paper that's 3,000 words and maybe you charge what ultimately is 50 cents a word. And, and you don't have to necessarily tell the client that, but as you're thinking about what to, to do for a quote, that's how you could come up with a quote. Um, it can vary, you know, like you might be working with a nonprofit. I have a nonprofit and I'm doing white papers and it's like 2,000 just because it is a nonprofit. Whereas if it were, a for-profit agency, I might, might easily be double that. So again, you have to think about, you know, who you're working with, whether you think they're going to be easy to work with. I often sometimes include what I call a PETA fee, which is a pain in the ass fee. Um, because you get a sense that, you know, maybe through no fault of their own, they just, you just know that the client's going to be a little more difficult. Maybe there are several people you have to deal with in order to get approvals you will get a sense of this stuff over time. But just to recap, you want to make sure you embrace the value that you're bringing to the table. Don't undersell yourself. Do not ever give hourly quotes because you don't want to get penalized for getting faster and better at writing. And you don't want to stress out your client or yourself with dealing with hourly quotes. Do a project quote always offer a scope of work with new clients. Once you've worked with a client or maybe you have recurring work, you'll get into a rhythm. That's okay. But for first time clients, you always want to have a scope of work. You want to get a down payment 
from first time clients. Usually I make mine one third of the project quote. Some people go as high as half and get that upfront before any work starts. I will be doing a separate video on what should go into a scope of work and how to invoice. So look out for that. But these are things to keep in mind. You want to make sure you have all the details. Okay, other types of stuff that um, you probably want to know what to charge for. So email marketing, that, that can be, again, you have to think about, you know, how fast you are, the type of client you're working with. Right now, I am doing basically, I would say, 75 to 100 per email. I'm talking about very basic lead nurturing. I'm not talking about an email newsletter. I'm just talking about some of those emails that you get when, you know, almost like those customer service emails, like if an abandoned cart email. If you go to a, a website and you put something in the cart, but then you leave, it might be a series of email workflows that talk to the person who's abandoned the cart. Or it could be a series of promotional emails for a webinar or a series of emails for um, lead nurturing. Someone's downloaded a guide and now you're going to have a series of emails that you, you send to the client after they've downloaded that guide, not the client, to the, to, the pros, to the person who's downloaded the guide. And so 75 to 100 per email is kind of where I'm at right now. And that can vary. Um, I might give a bulk discount rate if I'm doing like, you know, a bunch at once or if there's going to be recurring work. That's the thing you have to think about too is, you know, if I blog regularly for a lot of clients, so, you know, if I know I'm blogging, you know, four blogs per month for a client, I'm doing that for the entire year, I might give a little bit of a, an incentive discount, but not always because again, it's, I'm delivering the value, you know, the value is still there. So you don't want to undersell yourself and th the right clients get that. Like the ones who get what content marketing is, the ones who get the value that you're bringing and the ones who see it, who experience it because they're actually seeing the website traffic come in. They're seeing that website traffic convert into prospects. They're seeing those prospects convert into customers. You don't have to sell them. Like if your writing is doing what it should be doing, they're going to get it and they're going to be happy to pay that premium price for it. So everyone is happy. So again, you don't want to undersell yourself, understand the value that you're bringing when you're giving your project quote, because you're not doing an hourly quote, you want to make sure you're keeping in mind everything that project quote has to cover. It's not just the writing. It's everything that goes into the writing, the keyword phrase research, the conversations with the client, the interviews, the actual drafting, the revising. And then you have to think that that project quote also needs to reflect everything in your business. Like you are responsible for paying your own taxes and for your health insurance maybe, and for your retirement and all of that sort of stuff. So you want to make sure that you are giving project quotes that respect the value, respect you, respect the client. Other stuff that you might be writing, let's see, case studies. That's something you might be writing. And again, it depends on how long it is. Case studies, I, I, I believe, should be you know short if they're going to be effective. One page, two pages max. But a lot of times with case studies, they take work because you have to actually talk to your client's customer in order to get you know, why they love the, the process or the product or the service or whatever it is. So it, it can take a lot of, it can take more work um, so keep that in mind, it, you know, you're not just writing this short two page thing. There can be a lot of work that goes into that two page thing. Same with like pay-per-click ads. If you're doing that, a lot of work can go into, you know, 150 characters or 30 characters. So don't let the length of something that you're writing deceive you. Video scripts. That's something I've been doing more of the last few years and, you know, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds doesn't sound like it's not a lot, <laughs> you know, it goes by quickly, same with radio spots. But again, the value that that can bring, you know, you have to charge, you know, accordingly. So with video scripts, I'm anywhere from like 450 to 750 on up. And that's for clients who I, I've worked with and, and know well, and you know, it, it's an easier process for someone who's new, probably would be more than that. So again, and I'm probably on the low end to be perfectly honest when it comes to stuff like video scripts and maybe even some of this other stuff. So keep that in mind as you're watching this video too. All right, I think we need to like end things because I don't even know if this is recording anymore. 
All right, reminder, I am going to include a link in the description so you can actually read a more organized blog post on this topic and actually see some of the numbers and the examples I've used. I don't even know if this is actually going to make it to air, but we'll see. Once again, I am Robin. I am the copy bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick sloth and we hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you didn't just move along and we will see you next time bye